We are following breaking news. Thanks so much for joining us here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Stella Escobedo. Thanks so much for waking up with us. The Silverado fire in Orange County continues its path of destruction this morning, burning over 7,000 acres, causing tens of thousands of people to evacuate. Crews worked tirelessly overnight to get a handle on the flames. And we have live team coverage this morning. Netta Aranpour is tracking the fire weather conditions, but we begin with Evan Narani. He's live in Irvine with the latest developments. You have been watching firefighters trying to save homes homes in these neighborhoods. Evan, what's the latest? The flames really right up against the cul-de-sac, Eric, uh, behind us. This is one of those homes that is uh, being threatened mainly, and you can see how fast the winds are blowing, judging by the tree around us, really. Uh, I mean, these winds are especially intense. Santa Ana winds really picking up. When we were behind that backyard just a few minutes ago, the smoke was just too intense for us to stay where we were. Uh, you could just feel it in the air. It was burning your eyes. Uh, the, the flames are just about a couple hundred feet away from us behind this cul-de-sac, and all of the homes around here to give you an idea of where we are. We're on foot. We're in the Foothill Ranch area on Alton Parkway uh, and all of these homes are under mandatory evacuation. So many of the homeowners are actually still in their homes, still gathering their belongings as we speak and getting ready to leave. The road is still open for them to leave, but no one can enter back in. So I mean, once these homeowners leave, this is the last time that they're going to be able to gather their things until this fire is over. So uh, they're doing so as we speak just because of how quickly this uh, fire has popped up. You can see these fire crews are currently, uh, they just put away one of the hoses that they use to kind of clear off one of the hills behind this cul-de-sac, uh, but dry brush pretty much everywhere in sight behind the cul-de-sac. Um, as I mentioned, you can kind of see uh, what's going on as far as the smoke and the, the haze over here. Julio, if I could get you to come over this way and kind of show these palm trees behind us. You can see how the, the orange aura is over the smoke and the trees and all that. The Santa Ana winds blowing this fire farther off to our right hand side and uh, just lighting up the hillside behind this neighborhood and that's just behind these homes. So uh, it's still threatening the area. 7,200 acres as you guys mentioned. More than 90,000 homes under mandatory evacuations as we speak and uh, it seems like we haven't gotten confirmation but it seems like this fire is just growing in size because we've got notifications on our phone every I'd say every 30 minutes or so of new evacuations in place and I mean that seems to be an indication of just how things are going here uh, but as of our last notification it was 7200 acres zero percent contained Eric and uh, Stella all right, Evan Narani reporting live from uh, the Silverado fire, which is just one of two fires burning right now in Orange County. Yeah, and uh, Netta is tracking the conditions. I know you've been uh, telling us, you started yesterday saying that you're going to be watching these winds for the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, what are we up against today? What are the firefighters up against today, Netta? Well, of course, that area is so bone dry. In fact, here's a live look right now at those flames. That's that glow that you're seeing right there in the darkness. This is the Santiago Peak camera. You see all that smoke and the direction of the smoke going this way. It's an east to west wind with a little northerly component as well, and that's what they're up against. As far as the wind gusts so far, 25 to 30 miles per hour at those weather stations in and around those canyons. Of course, it's a lot stronger through some of those valleys and across the ridge tops as uh, the nature of the hillside is. It's very, very dry out there as well. Here's a quick look for you of the mandatory evacuation orders. The areas in red, of course, Foothill Ranch. That's where Evan and Julio have been, and they are right there in the middle of that area where the evacuation orders have been issued. This fire started in these canyons right here. It spread crossing the 241 and then Irvine Boulevard, of course. That's another area that Evan was earlier this morning. We saw those embers flying around there near Portola High School. So if we could show you now as far as the conditions go, this is one of those weather stations where it first started near the 241, a gust of 23 miles per hour. We're looking at relative humidity down to 5%. It keeps dropping here over the past couple hours as those winds kick up and it's all offshore, so it's all extremely dry. Now, just to the north would be the Blue Ridge Fire. It's about a 10 mile difference through those canyons, so there's a lot of the dry brush and those rolling hills in between those two fires. It does look pretty far away from each other. 
but of course they're both growing in size. This one now 8,000 acres with gusts there around 17 miles per hour. But again, it's the dew points and the humidity so, so dry out there that causes these fires to spread very rapidly. And they're under high wind warnings and red flag warnings to the north as well. So we'll continue to monitor that. For us here at home, our winds are going to start to pick up here in the next hour just before sunrise. They'll experience that as well. But today is a calmer day compared to yesterday. I'll send it back to you guys. And because of those powerful Santa Ana winds, word of another day of potential power outages here, sdg &E has warned people living in Camp Pendleton, Fallbrook, Oceanside, and Palo Reservation that their power could be shut off. Now, if that happens, the agency says residents should be ready to activate their personal emergency plan to keep their family and their pets safe. And one week after reopening for in-person learning, the Vista Unified School District is calling for a special meeting to address coronavirus cases already being detected among students. News 8's Chris Groh joins us live at Vista Unified headquarters with what's on the agenda. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Stella. And this latest case again happening at Mountain View High School, the second such case since school reopened on Tuesday here in the Vista Unified School District. Now we're told that this student tested positive on Sunday, but went to school on both Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of last week. Now take a look at this in announcing the case. The superintendent superintendent of the school district said that this is an isolated case not related to the other positive case and that the student likely contracted the virus while traveling on a club athletic team not affiliated with the school. Still, 150 students and four teachers are now quarantining, which only adds to the growing list of those in quarantine at the school. Already more than 130 students and staff were asked to do the same last week after the first student tested positive. So the school board plans to meet later today around 6 p.m. to discuss that original reopening plan and its impact. This is a school district that's been under intense scrutiny for that plan. Unlike other school districts, they reopened maybe more cautiously one step at a time. This is unified uh, really went ahead uh, with all 28 schools fully reopening starting last Tuesday. That's drawn criticism from some stakeholders like those that work in transportation for the district. That includes this man who spoke with News 8 anonymous, anonymously. You know, three kids do a seat. There used to be a seat behind the driver for social distancing. They said that's not an empty seat anymore. You got to put kids there. And so what we're looking at today again is four cases in total in this school district. Uh, those two others uh, are at uh, elementary school districts and again two of those at Mission Vista High School, I should say. Eric and Stella. Chris, thank you. And today, San Diego Unified is expected to announce when it will start phase two. The phase would bring elementary students back to class four days a week on an AM PM schedule and sixth grade through 12th grade back to a class twice a week on a similar schedule. Right now, the district is in phase one with appointment based classes for students as well as educators. Today we expect an updated case rate for San Diego County from the state. Right now we are still in the red tier, but officials have warned we could face more restrictions due to coronavirus. The county is reporting 358 new coronavirus cases out of nearly 8,000 tests. So that's a positivity rate of about 5%. Remember, we were at 2% yesterday. No new deaths to report here. That total remains at 870. We do have one new community outbreak to report in a youth sports setting for a total of 27 in the past week. Let's get our check in our local forecast here. Checking in with Netta Ronpour again. Hi, Netta. Hi, good morning. So we are going to notice our winds start to pick up, especially in the East County Mountains here shortly. And I do want to show you the smoke forecast model. Don't be surprised if it starts to get a little hazy in our skies, especially North County, because of course that fire burning, the Silverado fire in the Santa Ana Mountains and the Blue Ridge fire as well. We've seen some pretty strong gusts this morning. 3 a.m. Vulcan Mountain up to 43. Mount Laguna 39. Mount Laguna Observa Observatory 38 just after midnight. And then just after 4 o'clock at El Cap this morning in El Cajon, a gust up to 35 miles per hour. So we're watching these stronger gusts. East County, that's where most of you will start to feel that breeze here. It's already picking up in Pine Valley and Campo. We're noticing it get a little stronger right through 7 a.m. So just as that sun comes 
heads up. We'll get more of those east to west winds. In fact, it'll stay fairly strong through Pine Valley, Campo, uh, right along the 8 if you're headed east at all through those mountains. Keep that in mind. Through 10, 30, 11 o'clock this morning, we'll notice those winds pick up even more. And then after 2 o'clock this afternoon, by this evening, finally, things will settle down a bit. Same story goes for the Santa Ana Mountains as well. So hopefully for those fire crews, they'll get some of that break coming through. Today's a calmer day compared to yesterday for all of us, but for us, it's at more of the East County Mountains that'll feel that breeze. Yesterday, we felt it more North County Mountains. As far as relative humidity, it's dry all around San Diego. 9% Ramona, 10% Poway, 10% El Cajon. Look at that, even Del Mar, you're down to the teens. So extremely dry, and we'll keep feeling that dry air uh, coming on through as those winds pick up here over the next few hours, and then we'll get a little moisture back later on tonight. As far as the, as far as the potential for fires to spread, as you see here, that fire risk forecast model, it's going to continue to stay fairly dangerous out there for the mountains and our foothills through 9 30, 10 o'clock, staying strong, increasing the areas throughout the foothills by 1 p.m. And then it'll subside just as those winds subside. And if you haven't been outside yet, it's a cold one. 33 in Ramona, 37 Poway, 45 in Escondido. So you're near freezing there in Ramona. A huge change compared to yesterday at this time. Because it's so dry, these temperatures really have big fluctuations. So the chill overnight really hit us. Temperatures are 10 to 12 degrees warmer, uh, excuse me, cooler this morning than they were yesterday. Jenny. Seeing that 24 hour temperature change, if you just think that's the temperature, brings me back to my hometown, you know, where you're used to seeing the negatives out there. Hey, thank you for being patient. We are covering a lot of breaking news this morning. So here's your first check of the roads at 611. I want to mention this crash here on the five. This is on your northbound drive right between that exit of Harbor and Las Pulgas. We've got a single lane blocked. I believe this was actually a hit and run. I don't see any delays there, but we do have that lane closure. Travel time wise, we've got the Coronado Bridge kind of socked in right at mid span. So you're down to 12 miles an hour, but currently no crashes reported. Final thing, this is fairly minor, but still westbound on the 52 right after you hit Mass Boulevard right on the median. There's a stalled out car. I actually do see just a little bit of a break there. Back to you.